This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Spouses Talking Houses with husband and wife real estate team Jennifer and Brian Frost. Everything you want to know about buying, selling, investing, and owning property. So let's get real about real estate. Welcome back to Spouses Talking Houses. I'm Jennifer. I'm Brian. And today we have with us Matt DePippo with RMS Mortgage. Thank you for having me. What does RMS stand for? Residential Mortgage Services. Okay. And I believe you're the biggest lender in New England, right? Yes. Let's go with that. Yep. Okay. 100%. We're the best for sure. (laughs) Well, you certainly have a lot of resources, which is wonderful. And that's one of the things we want to do today when we get real about real estate is I want to talk about, you know, do you... Do you qualify for special financing? A lot of people ask me about programs for first-time borrowers, for veterans, mm-hmm. for you know first responders or teachers and, and stuff like that. So, um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get to that, we'll just talk a little bit about the realtor lifestyle. Um, I believe that this might be our 32nd podcast episode, and I still have not figured out that I don't need to do my hair because I'm going to come here and put headphones on. Every single time I'm like, I got to make sure that I look good for the podcast and uh, it's really all in vain. Plus no one's watching. Everyone's listening. I hope so. If you're watching, please immediately switch to one of the audio formats. (laughs) I was lied to. They told me they weren't videotaping it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's not the first time we've fooled you, is Mm -hmm. it? It's okay. (laughs) You get a roll with the punches. Yeah. Yeah. So you're an excellent guest. Um, what, what have you been up to, Matt? Not a whole lot. You know, just uh, closing up the summer, which is uh, crazy. Um, I feel like we were just all, I feel like it was St. Patrick's Day like a month ago. And we were yeah. all talking about what COVID was and what's going to happen. And then all it's of a crazy. sudden now it's almost fall. And, and, and like the biggest real estate and refinance boom, right? Who would have thought? Who yeah. would have thought? Which yeah. is, you know, it's, to me, I'm not an economy major and I'm not going to pretend to be one, but from an economic standpoint, like if you're looking at indicators, I would say that the housing market's a decent indicator of the strength of an economy, right? For in most cases, sure. If yeah. you're not right before a bubble, which yeah. isn't great, but um, yeah, it's you know I'm qualifying people. People are buying and selling houses, so it's good news. Yeah, you know? and well, consumer confidence usually also is very closely tracked to the real estate market, mm-hmm. and so I would have thought there'd be a lot of. Um, lack of confidence, but that, that doesn't really seem to have come up. Mm-hmm. And also in times of uncertainty, people want to put their money into something they can see and touch and right. feel and, um, and, and rents have gone crazy, mm. which, which just makes it cheaper to buy, mm-hmm. um, or, or even to be an investor to buy something to rent it. Sure. Um, I do have a question. Did you finish that bathroom remodel or is that project still going on? So let me think here. Cause I think we put, I put in the last towel hangers <laughs> like the other day. So you're done. I, oh, you're I done. I think that's it. Yeah. You I think, think that was the yeah. last on the list of things that we wanted to get done. That was nice. Right. nice. They were there. They were sitting like in our other room for a couple of weeks. Oh, that like last, month. that last so, couple okay. of items we is always. We to put our towels. And so that was, right. I think that was the finishing touch. So All yes, right. I'd say officially wrapped up. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. Great. Cause I don't think I've ever officially finished a DIY project no. in my house. That so. makes me feel so much better. <laughs> yeah. There's also 90, somebody out there. 99 uh, or 95% I think is probably typical that's my completion limit. rate yep. on a DIY right. job. Yeah. Then you yeah. just live with the rest. You know? Exactly. And right that's before like, you sell it, then you have to go the other five. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or hire somebody to do that. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I've, I've, I like doing a lot of things myself, DIY work, but I've since come to the conclusion that if you want to get a project done, just hire somebody. Uh, if you're on a timeline, hire right. somebody. Sure, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, so what what kind of programs are out there? We'll start with first time buyers, and then maybe we can talk about some other programs. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. So, what kind of programs are out there for our first time buyers? So, I think we first have to define what a first time home buyer is, um, and that is defined as uh, somebody, a person who has had ownership interest with in a property within the last three years. Mm. Um, and so if you've rented for 10, the last 10 years, but you owned 11 years ago, technically you may be considered a first time home buyer. So you became a virgin all over again. Is that it? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to use that analogy, I can, I, I do go that. I'll Absolutely. Go with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then, you know, that uh, opens up a lot more loan programs and 
again, a, a misconception is is that there are certain programs that are exclusively for first-time home buyers. I can think maybe of a couple that where you have to be a first-time home buyer by definition. Um, but most of the other low down payment or cash assistance programs, you can get away with having some type of home ownership in, in your past. Okay. But if you had co-signed for somebody, then you are not a first time home buyer, right? Yes. Yep. And so if they still have it, that, you know, that can get a little tricky. That's when you want to just take the next step and ask mm -hmm. somebody about it, you know, a loan sure. officer, Hey, this is my situation. Will this, mm -hmm. will this fly? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So if you're going to look at loan programs, it's good to take a step back and look at it from two categories. Conventionally, which would be your FA, um, your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans, and then the government loans, right? Mm -hmm. Which are FHA, USDA, VA. And then there's subsets to those loans, um, depending on who you're going through, whether it's like a financing authority like New Hampshire, um, New New Hampshire, Hampshire Housing, housing yeah. um, or some credit unions will have their own takes on things. But... Um, so conventionally, that's when you're going to look at the the loan programs where you hear the private mortgage insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the one of the main differences is how they're insured. So a conventional loan, there is private mortgage insurance companies that are insuring that loan in the event that somebody defaults, defaults on the mortgage, yeah. right? So so you know the lender has needs some type of insurance uh, to recoup that money that was lent out. And then FHA is government insured. So the government is backing those loans. Right. Um, and so, so that's one of the main differences. And that's through H HUD, housing, housing and Urban Develop Development, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so, um, you know, the, the there's low down payment programs conventionally that um, are really great for first time home buyers, low to moderate income, um, and, you know, middle of the road credit, I would say middle of the road to great credit. Um, which I would define that as 680 to you know 800, um, 680 below. Uh, you know FHA and the government loans start to make a little bit more sense because their insurance factors. You know how much you're going to pay for insurance are set um, and not impacted by so it doesn't by go higher. Score, it doesn't right? go higher the lower your credit score. Exactly. Is. Yeah. 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 And so that's something as your loan officer would want to do is when you apply with them, you tell them, hey, I want this in a loan, what are my options? Um, and then from there, you know, I'm, if the payment is $400 higher in FHA or um, conventionally, but if I can go, we can go FHA, similar down payment, but the insurance is a lot lower because you don't have that great of a credit score, then I'm, I'm going to say, hey, this might be an option that makes sense. And of course, we're recording this at the end of April in 2020, and you get updates on um, different guidelines all the time. So everything, all of this is subject to change. Do we go back April? in time? Oh, August. I thought I said August. No, you said April. Okay, I said April. All right. Summer's All right. right around the corner. Then. Yeah, there we go. About yeah. That. yeah, I was like, okay. Were we just talking about I'm how still fast in April. March and April? <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Time is a social construct, anyways. Um, I got the year correct. I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty twenty. Can't forget this year. Um, no. So yeah. That, All right, we're can't August. Wait, can't right. wait to forget this year. August yeah. twenty twenty. That's thank the you. Big disclaimer is is that things are constantly changing, right? Mm -hmm. So don't say, hey, my Uncle Bob bought a house in 1975 and he was able to do this. Why, right. why can't I do that? Right. Right. Obviously, there's a lot that has changed. So I'll be the best, my, my best advice I can give somebody is fill out an application or just, or just have a conversation with you know, a loan officer, my, me, would be a great option, um, and ask questions because that's going to be your most accurate and updated information. How do people reach you? So, uh, great question. You can go to our website and look me up as a loan officer. Or you can um, you can call me. I can give my my contact information at the end of the show. Um, mm -hmm. Send it out or post it uh, somewhere. Um, and there's also an app that you can download. So that there's a link on my contact information where you can go to that link and you will download my personal app. From there, you can submit an application. There's a mortgage uh, payment calculator, so you can go play with some numbers. Uh, and then there's also ways that you can communicate with me through the app. Yeah, I like the app because it's easy for me to share with basically one touch mm -hmm. when I'm talking with a, a buyer. And then it's easy for them to be able to run scenarios on different houses. They can put in the, the price different scenarios for down payment and you know what the property taxes are and come mm -hmm. up with some come up with some scenarios so i really like the app quite a bit actually yeah, yeah. so I, and that would be something again if you're okay with the technology that's a no-brainer for me download mm -hmm. the app because it's, there's no cost to it and you're getting a lot of great tools even if you know you're not going to be using it or you're not buying next month or whatever you're buying right. six months or a year from now it's still yeah. a great tool to have absolutely sure. absolutely um is USDA the same as rural development? 
Essentially, yes. Yep, they're they're most times used synonymously. So when somebody mm -hmm. says I want RD, that that's the general loan program that they're looking for is the zero percent down. And, and, and what's the benefit of that over FHA? Or? Is the, the, so yeah, the down payment. So USDA um, and also the insurance, the mortgage insurance that you're going to pay on it is less in a USDA loan than it would be for an FHA loan. But um, USDA and F, uh, VA rather are the only two that will do zero percent down payment. Oh, um, okay. Obviously, VA, you can't get that unless you're a veteran. Right. Um, and so the USDA, however, is based um, on the geography, like geographically, right? So there's certain USDA art, you know, rural housing areas that are marked out. And if you're in that area and deem rural, then you may be eligible for a US, USDA loan based on obviously other factors. And you do not have to be a first time buyer? Uh, I'll have to fact check myself. I do not believe you have to be a first time home buyer. Okay. I think the one you just closed for me, they, they were not a first-time home buyer, but it right. may or may not have been the three-year period. Right. Yeah. So I will have to ch check that, but again, but, but you saved that family quite a bit of money. I uh, yeah, that, that you know that's always the goal by so. letting them know about that program that they previously hadn't she been told. Wouldn't about. have thought about. Yeah. 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 And, uh, real quick, I'll bang out another misconception. Um, for whatever reason, well, I guess I understand it. People think that I have a vested interest in like their interest rate. Or, you know, a lot of times they'll, yeah, you know, exactly, they'll call yeah. me like the bank. Oh, hey, you know, yeah. we didn't want to tell the bank this. But I'm like, you know, it's the the only other person who wants to close this house more than you and get you into it is your agent and me. Right. Right. Or, or an I, um, yeah. rather. Uh, and, and so I'm not like your enemy. I'm trying to get it done with you. So that right. doesn't, you know, me saying, hey, this is your interest rate. I am going to quote you the lowest possible because one, I want to be competitive. And two, I, I want you to get the lowest interest rate possible. Right. I don't yeah. benefit as, you know, as a person, as a loan officer by locking you in at higher interest rate. So that's, to me, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, you, you have a vested interest in giving me a certain type of financing. It's not true at all. You know? yeah. Well, this is another opportunity for me to say nice things about TRID because most people really, most people in our industry don't like TRID because mm -hmm. it, it is... Maybe you should explain what uh, TRID yeah. is. Uh, <laughs> what does it stand for? Real estate? Oh, crap. I don't remember what it stands for. It's been a few years, but it, but it's it's regulation that came on to um, to prevent bait and switch with borrowers, and it also prevented. Um, it was a reaction to the mortgage meltdown. Um, if you've seen the movie The Big Short, which is a movie that I highly recommend, Great and a book that I highly recommend, um, but that mortgage meltdown, there were some uh, abuses within the mortgage industry that were corrected and perhaps overcorrected, which is why TRID is not always popular. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things was that um, it did used to be true that a loan officer could quote you a higher rate, they'd make a higher commission, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And now now the whole pay structure is regulated where, where you guys get paid the same regardless of the interest rate that you quote. Is that Am I wrong about that? No, you're 100 percent correct. Yeah. yeah. So then, that's yeah. why I say, you know, I'm on your team working for you to get into this house because most loan officers are paid commission based, right? So if of you course, don't yeah. close in the house, typically they don't get sure to, to pay from that. They don't right? get paid, so, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, same as us. That was a, exactly yes. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's that's we want to get you into the house. We want you to get to the best loan possible. Right. right. And if you yeah. do a good job, you'll get referrals and what? repeat business. Yeah. That's always a good Customers thing. for life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like for me, people are, you know, people might think, oh, the higher, the higher price you get me to pay, the more you make. You pay $10,000 more. That's like $2 extra for me. It's not, mm -hmm. not affecting my decision here. Right. Yeah. I, I want to see you get a good price on the home because we're the ones who are probably going to sell it for you mm -hmm. when you go to sell it. And I want you to make a profit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you to take a loss. So yeah. we want you to be happy. We want you to be happy. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we digress. So, um, so USDA, so who's a good candidate for USDA loan? Again, the, you know, low to moderate income, um, cause there are income limits on a USDA loan, uh, low to moderate savings, it, Obviously, looking in a rural area, mm -hmm. most, all of New Hampshire. Most of New Hampshire, most yeah. New Hampshire. Southern New Hampshire, you got to be careful because um, yeah. it's not deemed rural. Uh, some places near the Lakes region aren't mm -hmm. necessarily deemed rural. Uh, but a uh, really great resource is USDA.gov. So you can actually go on. Probably Google search would be quicker. And in, in, you know, USDA um, eligibility map, and then you can say, "Hey, I like this house in Laconia. Is it in the area?" 
geographically if that would be approved right. for that loan, and it'll pull up. And you put the address in, and it'll tell you if it's in an approved area. Uh, does that, that go by county or, or town or zip? I or zip. So okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what they use to map out okay. the lines, and I don't necessarily know if it's that like by town or if it's if they just kind of drew you know i don't know what they're using as a metric. because a portion of laconia could be in the, uh, that's what i mean yeah i was gonna say downtown is it how densely populated it is or something probably uh, yeah. yeah i would imagine yeah. yeah yeah there's census statistics that they're sure. probably mm -hmm. using you know yeah. mm -hmm. income and the average sale price of home and stuff like that population would i would okay. guess is another one so so with the usda the um the interest rate could be more favorable and the Mortgage insurance is usually cheaper. Yes. For somebody with a low down payment. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And then also with a low down payment, FHA would be a good option. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, 3% down. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I would typically say if you're going to look at you know, a big takeaway, if, if you're in the moderate to great credit, you know, like mm -hmm. around that 680 mm -hmm. to 720, 800 FICO score, but you don't, you know, so you've done a really great job with your credit, but you don't necessarily have a ton saved up for a down payment, then conventionally those low down payment programs start to make a little bit more sense. Okay. All right. Uh, you mentioned New Hampshire housing. Mm-hmm. So what, what kind of programs do they have? Yeah, New Hampshire Housing uh, Finance Authority is a great organization. Um, and they do, uh, they've got conventional uh, loan programs. They also have FHA. They do USDA. I'm fairly sure they have VA as well. Um, and they're uh, a housing authority that offer kind of extra benefits, Um and also some extra guidelines, you know, overlays is mm -hmm. what we call them. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the big ones is the cash assistance program. And so they have a conventional cash assistance program as well as an FHA cash assistance program. And so that will, you are eligible for either a 2% or 3% credit towards closing costs and down payment on those loans. Excellent. Yeah. Is that something that the borrower repays? So there, uh, it's changed. So it used to it be. It changes pretty frequently, I should mention. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it used to be that it was, it was a grant, uh, but legally, I don't know what the. Uh, you know, the specifics were, but it had a change to uh, cash assistance versus a grant rate. Mm -hmm. And so it's a 0% forgivable second loan okay. that's going to be with it. So I believe the timeline's four years. So if you buy, or, or I'm sorry, if you sell or refinance within that four-year period, you would have to be given back, essentially. Right, right. So if you're looking to, like, move into a home, take advantage of this down payment assistance, and then sell it at a quick profit and roll it over, well, you're going to have to repay that. But if yes. you stay in the home for at least four years with that same loan, then it gets forgiven. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay. Um, also, does New Hampshire housing is the one with the tax credit. Is that right? Or is that somebody else? Nope. New Hampshire, it's the tax credit, the um, MCC tax credit. And I would recommend, they've got a really great website, a lot of resources for first-time home buyers. Mm -hmm. um, they have a whole class. You can, they've got a, a, a few different first-time home buyer and online classes that you can take. But I recommend taking that class because it does a great job of breaking down what it is, why it's valuable, and and how you go about getting it. Um, so if if it's the short of it, it's the tax credit that can potentially make you eligible for up to two thousand dollars back each year for the life of that mortgage. Right? On so your you, income tax. On your income tax. Your federal income yep. tax. Yep. Yeah. There's more to it, obviously, legally, okay. IRS-wise, mm -hmm. yeah. and I won't yeah. get, sure. in, I won't get yeah. into the weeds, but that's why I recommend that you go take that class and, and read about it from a buyer's perspective. Just put it in the back of your head, remember it, and when you're applying for a loan or you know submitting an right. application, ask about it because sure. it's, it's going to be Sounds like a great benefit. A no-brainer. Yeah, yeah $2,000. How long does that last for? For the life, life of, of the loan. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. If you sell okay. it, you know, you can't say in your new home that no, I'm going to do right? it. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. that is a first-time home buyer perk, right? Uh, so you have to be a legit first-time home buyer to do that. Virtually in all cases. There are yeah. some instances where if it's a targeted area, I believe, mm -hmm. you can that's that's an exclusion, right? So you can get away mm -hmm. with that. Uh, but again, ask your loan officer to look it up. This is where the ins and outs really come in. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so what, you know, I'm, I'm not really familiar with what's going on with VA loans right now. Hmm. In terms of? It just, uh, you know, once upon a time on a VA loan, they could not pay any of their closing costs. The seller had to pay it. That's changed. Hmm. Um, it's still 0% down, correct? Correct. You have to have your certificate. Of eligibility, yes. Of eligibility, Typically okay. Typically a DD-214. Yes. Yeah, so how do you get a certificate of eligibility? Um, so you can go online, I believe, at the, you know, as the veteran and mm -hmm. request it. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't know 
how great that VA website is. You know, sometimes yeah, when you're dealing yeah. with government entities, they can they can be a little bogged down. Um, or we, as RMS, you know, loan officers and processors have the ability to get that for you, request it with your DD-214. So if I'm a veteran, which I'm not, mm -hmm. um, and I have taken out a VA loan on one property and I don't sell it, I decide to hold it and rent it out, mm -hmm. can I buy another property with my VA certificate or do I have to... Um, refinance that first property out of VA? That's a great question. Um, so typically, no, you wouldn't have um, the, like the called entitlement for right. the purchasing of using it again, right? So you'd have to, you can't have multiple, you can't have 10 VA loans going at the same time. Right. Right. Uh, so you would most likely want to refinance that into an investment property, you know, to a conventional loan at that point um, and to free up that. Because that benefit's supposed to be for your primary residence. Right. Yeah. So, and it's the same thing with FHA. You can't have a bunch of FHA loans out there. Right. Um, you know, the goal isn't for people to build their real estate portfolio with low down payment mm -hmm. government right. programs. Um, yeah. You know, so that's why if you buy your first house FHA and you're looking to move or, you know, you want to turn it, if you bought a multifamily FHA, right, now you want to go into a single family, mm -hmm. it would probably make sense to refinance that multifamily right. into a different loan program. So now if you want, you have the option to do FHA. When we bought our first home, which was FHA, the interest rates kept dropping, but the appraised value of our house was also dropping because mm -hmm. of what was happening with the market. We were able to do a streamline FHA refinance with no appraisal. And I think we did it three or four times Yeah. so that we were dropping our payment each time, yep. um, even though we didn't have the, the equity in the house. So that's a benefit of FHA and it very rarely happens, but they're also um, assumable. Yes. Yep. Yep, I haven't. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know if I would be part of the assumability end of it, but um, there, that is one of the loans that where you it, can assume it. Yeah, I've looked into it. It's not as easy as it sounds, and it makes more sense in a high interest rate market. So Correct. if our interest rates were at like ten percent right now, and somebody locked in at three, right? Sure. Then it would yeah. be okay. Now we want to look into assuming their mortgage. Yeah. Versus, because now you're, you know, odds are you're probably gonna have a lower interest rate than. The person selling the home. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, what about our what about our person who is not a first time home buyer? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we talked about a few of those. Um, can you avoid mortgage insurance by getting two two loans at once? Sure. So, yeah, that's um, slightly mm -hmm. different structure. Not. I don't see it as much, I guess, as I used to, but it'd be like an 80-20. Yeah, it had been popular, and now it doesn't seem to be. So the, the cost must be higher on it right now than some of the other options? or well, Exactly, yeah. And I think it. I would imagine a lot of it has to do with the market, the current market, right? Because now you're having people who, if they're in that position where they're either upsizing or downsizing, they're probably going to be able to make a profit from their current home. Mm -hmm. And so I think getting that 20% is a little bit easier. Right. Um, you know, but even if you're, even if not, and you want to look into that 80, 20 type of loan, you're adding in uh, another third party who most times is going to be doing that second loan for you, um, oh. which they're going to have their own qualification. They're an investor. You have another investor. Yes. Right. So, so right. in certain, you know, uh, I've seen them in, you know, the real estate where you're trying to get below a certain um, loan amount, right? So if mm -hmm. you're like at a million dollar house and you want to stay below a certain threshold, then you look into doing that that second to stay below that because it makes the numbers work. So it gets increasingly right. more complicated kind of yeah. the more you get into it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything we haven't uh, touched on? Uh, just the uh, FHA rehab maybe or... Uh, oh, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of... Yeah, a lot of our first time buyer price range houses are in need of some love right now. Yeah. 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 So... Um, I'll keep it. I'll keep it brief. Uh, okay, I, sure. I always recommend reaching out to a, a loan professional, mortgage professional. But uh, it's a great option if your your tolerance for a little bit more stress, a little bit more paperwork, and a little bit longer of a process. Mm -hmm. um, if you can, you're okay with all of those things, and you're okay with picking out your, you know who your contractor is going to be and making the decisions. Then that might be and using a licensed contractor and not doing the work yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. You, this isn't. You're not. We're not going to 
you know, most lenders aren't going to give you a bunch of money and say, hey, good luck with the DPI. <laughs> right, because <laughs> right. we yeah, just exactly. talked about that they're yeah. never going to get done. Exactly. Watch a YouTube right? video and go to Home Depot. Right, because yeah. right. the appraiser is going to say, hey, you just told me all these things are going to be done, so I'm going to mm-hmm. base my value off of these getting done, and they have to In get done. In a professional right. manner. Right, right, yeah. right. So right. that's, you know, that... It's, with permits and right, yeah. And there's people who workmanlike. are workmanlike, workmanlike manner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's there's buyers who are okay with that, and there's buyers who say this is already stressful. I just want to buy a house. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would yeah. be me. Yeah. But that is that is still a good option. So so thank you so much for talking about some special financing programs. Any anything else uh, that you had on your list? I think that's about it. Yeah. No. I mean, I like I said, it's the best way to get started is just with a conversation. So. And Massachusetts also has a. a uh, a cash assistance program to through mass housing. Yep. Through mass housing. Yep. Similar okay. type of program, right. um, but similar, but different, similar, but different, of course. So thank you so much for joining Thanks, us for spouses, Welcome. talking houses and getting real about special financing programs with Matt DePippo at RMS mortgage. What's your cell phone, Matt? My cell phone is nine, seven, eight area code eight, five, two, eight, two, five, two. Oh. Okay. I was too late with that? No. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was too I thought he was too late. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. If you need money, call Matt. <laughs> Here's a courtesy of the Eric Lindbergh Trio. Please visit his website at www.ericlindberghworld.com. Jennifer and Brian are licensed to practice real estate in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Brian is also a certified general appraiser in New Hampshire. They are not lawyers, accountants, home inspectors, or therapists. Real estate customs and rules may be different in your area. Each Keller Williams Realty office is independently owned and operated. The realtor name is trademarked to members of the National Association of Realtors. If you are currently under contract with a real estate agent, this is not intended as a solicitation. Views expressed on this podcast by Jennifer may not be shared by Brian and vice versa, nor are they necessarily the views of Keller Williams Realty. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.